Hey guys, how you doing and welcome back to episode number 3 of the Dwarf Campaign on Total War Warhammer. So just wanted to quickly say before we get going with this battle, and that is that I've chosen the winner of the Total War Warhammer competition, and I've left a comment on their entry, and so I'm just waiting for them to get back to me. So it's a little bit late getting back to you with this, but I wanted to make sure that they do reply, and then I'll announce the winner on the next part, and then I'll change the name of my other lord, not Ungrim, but my other one, to be the winner's name as well. Unfortunately, I didn't realise until recently after I did the first part that you can't change the names of the armies on Warhammer, just the units. But still, it was awesome to see all your suggestions. There were so many to go through, and the detail on some of them was incredible. It made picking a winner very hard. And of course, I'll be doing exactly the same for the Chaos winner, and the next episode of that campaign is coming out today as well. Also, if you've entered the Twitter competition, the winner for that has also been announced too. So thank you to everyone who entered. Your support, as always, is fantastic. So let us continue this campaign today. We've got this battle to start things off with. It's me defending Mount Squighorn against Nashrak and his Bloody Spears army. I don't think we're going to win it, as I said in the previous part, but if we can take as many of them down as we possibly can, it will make the job a lot easier for our lord over here to come across and reclaim the settlement back. So let us begin, let us fight the battle, and see what we can do. They've got quite a few, they've got a couple of orc boys, a few archer units, three of them, a sort of skirmisher cavalry unit as well. So they're very much a skirmisher army. They're not the best or most capable army to um, to face off against. I mean, we're not, I'm not concerned about them, should I say. Obviously, I think we're going to lose this battle. We've only got miners and a couple of quarrelers, so we're not in the, the best of shape either here, really. But I think we can take a, a few of them down, and then obviously the job will be a lot easier for that other lord in the north to come across. Right then, let's begin. And, well, it's snowing, so if we can take nothing else from this battle, we can take that. It's rather picturesque. <laughs> I don't think we're going to take the victory from this one, but we'll definitely try. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my miners on the left flank and then try and bait the bloody spears to come forward, attack my centre here, um, hopefully they can hold for as long as possible. Then that allows my miners to come in, attack them from the rear, surround them, and hopefully that will then cause uh, a drop in leadership and some extra damage to those units as well. Hopefully that will be the case. I mean, because most of those units that they've got are skirmish units. They've only got two units of orc boys, but apart from that, they are skirmishers. So we've got to be mindful of that, but at the same time, if we can surround them, at least we take that threat away, and then all that's left is the skirmishers to deal with afterwards. So let's start the battle. Push forward a little bit. Dwarves just stay there for a second, those miners. <coughs> So what are they going to do first? What's that first move on the chessboard? They're going to bring these golf, these golf, these, these <laughs> golf, these wolf rider archers forward. I think they are. Yeah, there they go. So let's try and see if we can take them out with our quarrelers. Get some shots off, lads. Come on. Take them down. That's it. A couple have fallen back. One more shot should do the job. Oh, they're trying to... Right, okay. Fair enough. This unit of mine is drive them forward, or drive them back, I should say. These two start moving in to begin the flanking charge. They're dropping. Excellent. They're broken now. So now, concentrate your attention on firing on these orc boys. Pull back a little bit. Get the dwarf captain to spread out to receive... Ganashrak in a second. Go forward for a charge. Don't want to get the qualities involved yet. Is it taken down, taken down, taken down? <coughs> Miners are coming across, but they're being received by the Orc boys. I know the Orc boys are going back in for a centre charge. Good. 
Might minus. Go, 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 go. Right. These hold them by going to melee attack. And then this unit of crawlers try and hit them from the sides because they are exposed to that side there. Why oh, these miners surround these lot here? This unit of miners come back across to try and drive the arrow boys over there away. Oh my god, my dwarf captain's already fleed. Wonderful. That's not a great start, is it? Dear god. Right, don't go for these guys. Point blank range. Hit him in the back. I've engaged in melee combat with these arrow boys there. Arrow boys, not arrow boys, arrow. Okay, well at least they've got the backs to us now. We should get some nice kills off here. They're yeah, dropping fairly rapidly. Keep holding, lads. Keep holding. Right, they are going now. Wavering because of damage sustained. Excellent. Come on, keep going, keep going. Right, try and concentrate on this unit of Orc boys now. These pull back. Give the opportunity for them to then fire down. I mean, if nothing else as well, these miners aren't the best units, obviously, that the dwarves have got. But they've still got heavy armour to them, as well as the Quarrelers, so that's good. But hopefully once we start increasing our settlement sizes up, we should get some better garrison forces to defend our cities with. And hopefully then battles like this should be winnable in the future. But for the moment it looks like we're going to yeah, get a defeat here, unfortunately. There's a chain route kicking in as a decisive defeat as well. How many do we take down? 169. It could have been better. It could have been worse. Well, it's that, that, that's 169 less uh, orcs that the other lord has to deal with. So that's, you know, it could have been worse. It's an improvement on a complete and utter annihilation, at least. So, decisive defeat. Feels bad, but it's not the end of the world. At least they didn't take the settlement either. They just sacked it, which I'd rather them do. They've taken a thousand gold with them, but still... It's better than them taking the settlement from me. Um, grudge issued. Surprise, surprise. You piss off the dwarves and you get a grudge on you. Um, so defeat the following army in battle, which is what we're going to do straight away now. Which is fine. So we'll bring this lord across now to hopefully wreak vengeance on them. And defeat them in memory of the fallen dwarves in that previous battle and we can do that right now we can fight the battle no we're not we're going to all resolve it it's pretty much a given that we're going to win this battle so Luke gains 72 we shall obviously execute the captives oh we've got some armour good and there goes Gashrak he's fallen to his death wonderful stuff I knew we'd get him back in the end and the grudge is successful So, armor gained. Wonderful. So, let's have a look at our legendary lord now. So, armor of destiny, armor plus 6, physical resistance 10%, and ward save 10%. That's rather handy. He's also got a skill point, which we could go for with three branches here. Campaign movement range plus 10%, or full plate armor. Well, he's got the armor plus six from this armor of destiny, so I'm going to go for root marcher. We probably will need that in these early stages of this campaign, more so than probably later on. So yeah, we'll go for root marcher to begin with. We're going to go for underway stance next turn. People were mentioning this in the previous part. Get him in the underway stance. Get him across the mountains or under the mountains, I should say, and then meet up with Ungrim here, and then we'll push down. And try and go for this iron rock here. This red fang settlement there. Go across to probably that one of scabby eyes. And then maybe look to start taking on the green skins then. But we need to be strong enough in order to take on Grimgore. Because he is a very powerful legendary lord. So we've got to be ready for him. The north is secure though for the moment. Zufbar are laying siege to Mount Gunbad. If they take that settlement from them. 
my northern borders should be okay. So that's the situation basically, ladies and gentlemen. What we also need to do, because obviously public order is going down again, it's minus 10 per turn because of the provincial instability, that will drop by a point each turn. However, it could start to cause rebellions in this province, which we don't want. So I'm going to have to recruit, for the moment, another legendary lord to just uh, make sure everything is okay here. Arrogant, well, we don't want that because that's minus one public order, so we'll go for blind. Gives a melee attack of plus three, but melee defense of minus three. Fair enough. It's better than losing public order. So we'll recruit a couple of Dwarven Warriors to try and, you know, get the public order in check by their presence. Grudge Thrower, we can get that sometime soon, which is important, especially for these cities down here. Getting a Grudge Thrower into the army would be quite handy. At least that's good. Book of Grudges is now empty again. Excellent. And that's all we can do this turn. So we'll end it, see what the hell happens. Where's they? Where are they going? Suffering from attrition in the mountains, though. Okay. Nothing's really happened that turn. Fair enough. Underway stance for you. Get yourselves over there. Then we can team up with Ungrim in a second. You grow restless, do you, Ungrim? Right. We can't get. We haven't got sufficient funds. Well, we don't really want to have them yet. We can recruit them later on. So we've got a unit of Longbeards. We've got three Dwarven Warriors. We've got a unit of Miners. Okay, what we'll do then is we'll go for two more Dwarven Warriors. Get rid of that Miner unit. Don't want them. And they are full Dwarven Warriors and Quarrel. There's no Miners in that one. I think Miners are just, you know, leave them just to be garrison forces and nothing else because they're not that handy to have in your yes. ranks when you're being offensive with them. Um, yeah, that's all we can do there. <coughs> Probably got his minus nine now, so that's we need to make sure that keeps going down properly. I can't do anything about it yet though. As long as the green skins stay as far away, away as possible, I'm alright with that. Let's have a quick chat to my Dwarven friends again if we can. Try and cement some more relations. Oh, hello, hello. What would Grungai do? A Reckoner has approached. <coughs> requiring guidance on how to settle a dispute between two clans. Both are claiming ownership of a mine. A mine! <laughs> One has remained loyal to you for centuries. And the other has opposed many of your edicts. So, give it to our loyalist clan. We get income. <coughs> Excuse me. But the thing is, we haven't got any of those mines. We've got gem mines. We haven't got gold mines or iron mines or stone stone quarries. So we're not going to really benefit from that. So it's probably best to improve our relations with Karakodrin, unfortunately. Oh, we've got that. Gather the throngs. What's that given to us, actually? Recruitment costs minus for dwarves and miners. 5% minus for both of those units. Not too bad, then. Dwarf resolve would give us 5 plus leadership for dwarven infantry units. You know what? That could be quite handy now. Oh, melee attack for dwarven warriors. And melee defense. Yeah, we'll go for that one. Militia training, actually. We'll go for that one to start with. I think that could be quite handy, actually. Right, so that's that. Yeah, let's go to diplomacy. So. <coughs> hopefully that deal we did then with them has improved our relations. So, yes, we can get some pretty good deals here. Military access. We've accepted that. Defensive alliance? No. Maybe down the line though we can go for that. Greetings, Kinnaman of the Hold. What can I Anything we can do just to improve relations is a good thing with the with these clans, definitely. 
But Akvar, come on. We've got military alliance with them. We've got probably everything we can anyway with them. So we need them to start picking away at places like Black Crag, probably. Try and put pressure on them from that direction while we go from this way. Keep them busy while we take out Scabby Eye and, you know, the other one. What was it? Um, Red Fangs, that's it. Because they aren't going to be easy to take down. So Black Crag has now been targeted. Good. Okay. Um, public order, minus eight. Oh, come on, seriously. You've got to get this down, lads. You've got to get this down. Can't be having a rebellion in the province of Silver Road. We cannot be having that. Or well, Badakvar, what are they going to do? Are they going to try and push an army across now? Oh! Hello? What's going on here? Oh, so Zufbar has been attacked. Oh, they are actually being the aggressor on this one. They're attacking Schwarzenhaven. Well, I'm going to have to obviously go on and enter the, the war on the side of my ally, obviously. I don't think that dwarf and sorry that uh, vampire faction is going to be too close to attack me, so we should be okay. Look at that! It look, looks like uh, Barakvar taking a full stack army across to deal with the greenskins. That's excellent. Oh, a shameful, dis a shameful display! A close ally of yours, an influential dwarvy or da sorry Dawi sitting on several guild councils, has shamed his family name with a craven act. He should, by all accounts, take the Slayer Oath and go into exile. But we will lose his influence. Oh my god. So if we make him take the Oath, we lose diplomatic relations with Barak Var. Uh, oh no, we can't have that. We cannot have our public order affected anymore. So we're going to have to take the hit to our relations with Barak Var. Hopefully that won't break alliances with them. We're still pretty friendly. Should be. Yeah, <coughs> it's not terrible. So it's it's well it's you know it's worth taking the hit there to be honest with you. So let's take them out of underway stance as we move further south. The slayer in me seeks death. So plus seven. Its military presence is eleven. Now that's the problem. So we're gonna have to probably make you the offensive army at the moment. Oh well, the oh no, Iron Rock. What's happened? They've Taken that settlement the greenskins have they are they at war with the red fangs they are the thing is what's going to probably happen is they're going to try and form confederations soon which will make you know things like the amount of tribes they've got or the amount of settlements they've got more It'll give them more settlements obviously and make them a lot stronger a lot quicker so we're going to have to be careful of these confederations that will try and form Anyway, right, minus seven. It's not going down here. Military presence is not doing the job. Oh my god. Seriously, come on, lads. I can't keep investing money into you. Hopefully that will start to make a bit of a difference. And if we, if we do have a rebellion, at least we can take that army out to deal with it, hopefully. Um, jug off. I'll jug on you in a minute, pal. Well, that's quite a formidable army. Could we get you to try and attack Ainuak instead? Just thinking. Yeah, you could come and join up with me there, laddie. Okay. For the wisdom of Valea. Right. Hopefully, then they could come across, support that battle. It'd be rather handy. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Oh, the, what did it? Oh no! Zufbar, stop being so bloody aggressive. Well, at least it's against Greenskin, so we can take that. Of course, again, enter the war on the side of the ally. Scabby Eye, what are they up to? They're going back. Okay, a war has been formed. The Greenskin, so the ground shakes, the mountains tremble, but this is no earthquake. Something far more deadly approaches. A war. The warriors in. Such and such, ready their weapons for the greenskin tribes will show no mercy. Oh my god. A confederation, as we thought, has happened. What I feared. Follow again for the legendary Lord of Ungrim. Let's try and see what happens if we try and attack here. Drain them. 
Oh, we could have a victory here. <clears throat> Let's go for it. Let's fight the battle, guys. And see if we can take them down. Take some pressure off the southern tribes or the southern areas of our borders. And just try and push them back a little bit. I may raise this settlement, actually. I may. Oh, I don't know. I probably will take it. I won't probably raise it, actually. But I'm just thinking what would be the best option there. Probably, yeah, take it, try and reap the benefits up from the settlement, and then push on with Barakvar to try and take the other settlement away from them. Try and drive them back. But as I said, you know, these, these guys, the Greenskins, will start forming a lot of confederations now. They'll team up with other tribes, and then that will be when it will get very difficult for me very quickly, I should imagine. We have to be prepared for that. Once we deal with that rebellion issue in our main province of Silver Road, we'll get rid of that army completely, disband it. That will get our upkeep costs right back up, and then we can invest it in the other armies instead. Okay, right, we're in green skin territory down here, we're not snowing now, far from that, okay. So we've got dwarf warriors here, obviously more capable than the dwarven miners. We've got three units of quarrelers, so they will go into the front line and then we'll get our dwarf lord just behind them. Balance of power is 50-50. The pre-battle balance of power still is a little bit broken, I believe, so that didn't give us a true indication of what can happen here. Maybe an order resolve would have been the better option, but we're in the battle now, so we may as well go for it. Hope to God it will be. Keep pushing in, keep pushing in, pushing on. Who we got here? Goblins, arrow boys, arrow boys goblins so they've got mainly they've got melee infantry gotta be careful of that wizard though they could cause some damage so they're gonna try and sit back here so we'll bring our quarters further forward here and see what we can do let's have a look at our lord actually while we've got a chance to I love his horns on his helmet he makes me feel horny. Way! Oh my god, that's awful. So sorry. So sorry, guys. You should not have heard that. Right. Are they going to stay out of range? But if they stay out of range, I'll have to take pickings at them with my crawlers. If I don't mind myself doing that. Push on, push on. Pick up the pace, lads. There's killing to be done. Now, the straight away, once you've realised they've gone into range, they're then starting to push in. But let's get some shots off before the attack. Go for their sword units more than their archer units. That's, uh, concern, that's what I'm concerned about. Yeah, put pressure on them, that's it. Numbers starting to drop a little bit here. Okay, let's pull, up, pull them back, pull them back. We have not taken down 300 units already, so where's the difference in that numbers come from? God knows. Right, let's push in. Form up, gents, form up. Oh, looks like the wizard's buffing up his unit. Let's push in the centre with our lord. Go on the left and the right side with our quarrelers. Lord's gone in. Get in there, lad. Oh, yeah. 
Yes, and the Orc boy is flying. Come on. We may have to get these qualities in melee in a second. Well, they've already engaged in melee on that left-hand side without me knowing. They're starting to fly onto the right flank of this unit of goblins. Good. How are we doing? We're holding, we're holding, we're holding. Keep holding for as long as you possibly can. Come on, come on, come on. That's it. Get these shots off. These I've not got much armor, these goblins, so we should put pressure on them quite quickly with our koalas. That is if they're not keep being buffed by the bloody wizard. Right, flank them from the side here. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. That's when the wavering begins, good stuff. Come on lads. Let's grind the victory out here. Let's take this settlement away from these green skin scum. Ah, balls, they're starting to take some losses from the archer fire though, which is not what I want to see. Therefore push on. Drive them away. Obviously, we've got no cavalry, which is an absolute ball ache because obviously we've got no mobility really. It's one of the things you have to deal with with the dwarves. They've got great armor, but the flip side, they've got no cavalry whatsoever, which is obviously understandable. Can you imagine a dwarf trying to ride a horse? It just wouldn't work, I don't think. <laughs> it just would not work. Well, Isabella's a little dwarf, isn't she? Bless her. She rides horses, so maybe, maybe it's possible. <laughs> I don't know. Bless her, she does horse riding, you see, and she's only a little dot. She's kind of dwarfy at the moment. <laughs> Which, by the way, I should be getting a video out with her soon, where she'll be actually taking control and playing the game herself. Rather interesting, won't it? So hopefully that will be rather good for you to, to watch. Hopefully in the next week or so I'll be doing that video. Quite entertaining, I hope. Right, we're doing okay. Putting pressure on the wizard here. What's his name? Scafag Blood Reaper. Nice. Come on, get that goblin unit down. We're surrounding them kind of round here. We should start to see a massive jump in uh, the numbers here for us in terms of... Oh, sorry, the balance of power should start to jump up massively here. Dwarf Lord, get back here. Unit's starting to flee. Where is it? Over there. Balls. Come on. Let's get it back into the mix here. That's it. That little charge, that tiny charge then, put those Orc boys under pressure and started to cause them to begin to waver. Lord can take that damage, I'm, I'm not concerned with him at all at the moment. Right, they've basically dealt with that unit over there, so come across here. Try and put some pressure on them. <coughs> Back into the fray. Come on, get Scaffard down. A bastard. Boom! Welcome to the party, Dwarf Lord. Lun Dum Tamer. Right, Lord. Finish him, finish him off yourself. It's been a little bit of a grindy battle, this has, but we should be alright now. We should start to see some progress made against the enemy. As the bouncer power starts to creep towards us. Lord, come on. Finish them off, lad. We shouldn't lose any unit entirely, so at least that's going to be okay. Keep driving them back, that's it. Make them completely break. Once this unit goes here, we should be alright. So let's just fast forward a second here, because obviously it's, it's going to be, hopefully, a victory in a minute. 
victory's in our grasp. Good. Come on, take him down. Take him down. Enemy Lord's gone. That's Mash Rowling starting to kick in. Oh, right, end the battle. It was Pirate victory. Flipping heck. That wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. We lost 492 men, or dwarves. They had lost most of one of the armies. Second army, Scafad Guan. Got 325 away from the battle, so he had 325 remaining. But still, he can't flee anywhere because it's a settlement, you see. It's a settlement battle, so we should be able to take it, finish them off, replenish, let the Balakvar move on and take that other green settlement from the enemy. I'm happy for them to do that. And then we'll see what happens after that. Right then. Okay, so we didn't lose a single unit, which is good. So we can replenish them all. Um, period victory, yes, we know. And then... So, loot and occupy. Yeah, we'll definitely just occupy, I think. So, Ainurak is now under our control. Excellent. Enemy killed in battle. Ainurak is secure. So there we go. Let's increase our dwarf's lord's um, skill here. So we go for full plate armor, but down here, hmm, when do recovery time enables lightning strike battles. When reinforcements are present, this option to carry out line strike will appear on the pre. Also, oh, basically, that's like um, a night battle, isn't it? Where you will take away the reinforcing army from the battle. That could be quite handy to go for. So, I think I'm going to go for that. I'm going to go for Wall Breaker. Try and res you know, reduce the enemy siege holdout time by one. Okay, so Barak Var, you are still going across, I hope, if we just initialize the uh, war target to go for that, yes. Black Crag. Iron Rock will hopefully start to calm down after the next turn. You carry on that way. Oh, why have you increased Ungrim's skill? What's he done? Slayer, Slayer King gives plus three for Slayer units. Or then, melee attack that is, or melee attack to him plus three. Mm, oh, mm, yeah, that'd be quite good. Weapon strength against green skins. Increasing that, because we already done it by one. Oh, yeah, melee attack for, yeah, that one. Increase it again for our dwarf warriors. Okay. All right, that is where I'm going to leave this part, ladies and gentlemen. So not too bad. We've successfully defended Mount Squigorn in the end. Zufbar still laying siege to Mount Goodbad. We've pushed further south. We've taken Iron Rock from the Greenskins. We've got Barakvar coming across as well to hopefully take on Black Black Crag. So things are looking okay. We need to boost up our armies though relatively quickly. So once this um, rebellion here has happened, we'll get or if it doesn't happen. Either way, we'll get rid of that army eventually, and that will then free up some more economy to go into these two armies here. And next episode, guys, I will definitely name the Legendary Lord to be the competition winner's name once they get back to me. So I hope you've enjoyed this part today. If you have, please do drop the video a like. And as always, thank you so much for watching. But until next time, this is Warrior Spotter for now saying farewell.